All right, we're going to learn how to graph a derivative using a TI-8384 calculator. I'm going to do both on the same video because it's kind of crazy to do two videos with tiny little differences. Now, for the 83, I'm going to use an old 84. It has the same operating system as the older 83s do. So it's going to look exactly the same as an 83. Here's what we're using for the 84, the CE edition. Any of the new 84s are going to look like this one, including some of the 84s will look like this. Okay? So, to get started, we have to type the equation in the calculator. So, this is pretty simple and straightforward. It's 5x to the 4th. You have to push the arrow button to get out of the exponent. Minus 4x to the 5th. I'm going to go ahead and put a 0 in y2. That will be apparent as to y in a little bit. Same thing here. We're going to type in 5x to the 4th minus 4x to the 5th. I don't have to push the arrow buttons to get out of the exponents because this one isn't beautiful. Okay? I mean, you got speed and you got beauty. You, you can make your choice. This one's going to graph quicker than this one. In fact, I think I'll put them side by side and press graph at the same time so we can see this. I'm going to go ahead and put the 0 in here. Now, to get the derivative in the calculator, you're going to go through the same button pushes for both. So it's going to be the same work. It's just going to look different on the screens. What we're going to do is press math, and then we're going to go down to 8 for n derive. It's going to say the same on both at the beginning. And we're going to do this in y3. That way I can have my function in y1, 0, and y2. So in y3, I'm going to press math, and then I'm going to go down to 8. And you can see it says end derivative like I said it would, but on the screen it doesn't say end derivative. Okay? And on this one, we're going to press math. We're going to go down to 8, just like the other one. It says end derivative. You press enter, and it doesn't look the same. Okay? You're going to type the same things in, however. So on the new calculator, we want our y3 to look like this d over dx, parenthesis here, y1, close parenthesis, slash x equals x. So I have to put the x's in. As you can see, they're missing, and you have to put the y1 in. The x is easy. There's an x button right here. To get the y1, and it's the same on the old 83's, 84's, you press vars over to y vars and press enter. And that will give the y1. Vars, which is right here, over to y vars, you press enter, and see, there's the Y1. You press Enter, and it sticks it in there. And I just got to come down here and add, add an X. Okay? So that's set up for graphing. And the next thing I want to do is get the box off the Y1, because I don't want to graph that. I only want to graph the derivative. Okay? So there we go. We got it set up to graph my derivative. On this one, we have to do it a little bit differently. On the old one, our y3 should say n derive princy y1 comma x comma x close princy okay and we're off screen just a little bit there we go so you press the vars button just like the other one over to y vars press enter twice comma x comma x close princy now the only thing extra you're pressing here is a couple of commas and like the other one, I want to come up here and turn that off. So I'll only graph the derivative in zero. All right, now what we're going to do, I'm going to put them where we can see both screens. Let's see who's faster. We press zoom on both, and I'm going to press six at the same time. Three, two, one, go. Now that responded a little quicker, so maybe I pressed uh, six a little quicker on this one, but you see this one graphs faster. The old 84s, 83s graph a lot faster than the new ones. It's because there's too much junk in this to make it pretty. Okay, and you can see the screens come out identical. So it doesn't matter which calculator you have. All the work's the same. I'm just going to work with the pretty one from here. Okay. All right, so what we do now is this. What purpose does a derivative graph serve other than sometimes teachers are like, yeah, what's a derivative look like? Well, now you know how to do it on your calculator. It serves two purposes. These two points where it crosses the x-axis are my critical values. I can find them with the calculator real quickly. All I have to do is hit second trace, go down to number five for intersect, and press enter three times. 
and it tells me x equals zero. So this one's at x equals zero. I hit second trace, go down to five, go over to the other intersection point, press enter three times. It tells me one. So I have two critical values, zero and one. It's the same thing on this one, so I wasn't doing it, but second trace, five, and then you press enter three times. It's literally the exact same thing, it tells you the same answer. I almost prefer this one because it's easier to read and I'm slightly blind because I had a bad eye doctor. All right, now, once you've got the critical values, you can make a sign chart real fast. You can put zero on here and one. Those are my critical values. On this side of that x-axis, we have a positive derivative. On this side, we have a negative. So I can just put, oops, that's wrong. This is minus, plus, and minus. I can just copy the signs over. We're below, so it's minus. We're above here, so it's plus, and on this side, we're minus. And then you can draw some arrows in so you know where it's increasing, decreasing, max, and mins. That's why graphing derivatives are fun. All right, now let's go over how to graph a second derivative. We gotta get the calculator set up, so we're gonna press Y equals. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the Y3 because I don't wanna graph my first derivative this time, and it's the same procedure. We're gonna press Math 8. Okay, so we're pressing Math 8. We got our end derivative in there. And on the new ones this time, in y4, we want it to be d over dx, princey, y3, comma, x equals x. y3 slash x equals x. So I'm going to put my x in there by pressing the x button. I'm going to press vars over to y vars, press enter, and get the 3 to get me my y3, and then x. Now it's set up to graph the second derivative in 0, so I can find and possible inflection points. Same thing on this one, it's just going to look different. I'm going to go ahead and turn off that derivative by pressing enter on the equal sign. Come down here and press math 8. This time I press vars, go over to y vars, I go down to number 3 and press enter and I put comma x, comma x, close parenthesis. And this one's set up to grab the second derivative. So let me write this down. So in y4, wrong, y4 we put n deriv y3 comma x comma x. There we go. We have the calculator set up. We're going to see which one's quicker again. This one can take a little bit of time to graph. They're a little slow. And I'm flipping sides, so finger pushes don't have anything to do with it. So three, two, one, go. We're pressing zoom six. Ah, syntax error, no fair. I probably didn't have a comma right. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't have a close princey right. Darn it. Ah, failure. But anyhow, this one's where you got the derivative graphed. They too take a while to graph. Don't kid yourself. This is too much work for this little calculator. But you can see the two graphs look the same. Again, I'm going to stay with the pretty, pretty one, not this one. This one's getting shut off because I'm a dumbass. All right. So when I go to graph my second derivative, it looks like this. Now this is a possible inflection point and so is this. It's the same process up there, except Mr. Calculator won't find this one when I hit second trace five. Okay, it's not gonna find it. If I press enter three times and I'm right on it, it's going to jump over here. It's going to jump over to that one, okay? And that one is at 0.75. It's not going to find that one because it's not actually crossing, but if you were to actually find the second derivative, you'd find it's at x equals 0. Usually these are at x equals 0 that you can't solve for on the calculator. And again, we have a positive sign this way and negative sign this way. So up here we're above, so I can put positive. Between or above, so I can put positive. Over here we're below, so I can put negative. And you can see where it's concave up and concave down. So there are some uses to doing this with a calculator. Hope you find this helpful, useful, and not too boring. Uh, we'll talk to you all later.